Hi, thank you for joining me. I have a few questions I'd like to ask you. Do you know where you will be in a hundred years from now? Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 says, For it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this a judgment. We all have an appointment with death, and we don't know when that is. But after that appointment with death, there's another appointment, and that's that judgment. And that's before God the Father, the creator of the world. Do you know why Jesus died on the cross at Calvary? Listen to what Scripture says in 1 Timothy 1.15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Jesus died upon the cross to save sinners. Luke 5.32. Jesus said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Why did Jesus die on the cross? To save sinners. How? By repentance. Repentance. Do you know what sin is? Do you know what your sin is? You have two appointments. One with death and one with judgment. Whatever your sin is, you need to discover what it is now so that you can do as Jesus said, repent. What is your sin? Listen to what John, 1 John 3, 4 says. Whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. What is the law? The law is the Ten Commandments. The Bible also describes it as the law of Moses, the moral law of God. Well, how are the Ten Commandments going to help us? Well, I don't know if in times past you have received any of these tokens. I know the wife and I pass these out. On one side of them is the Ten Commandments. And on the other side, is the cross of Jesus Christ and what he did for sin. You can find the Ten Commandments also in the Bible in Exodus chapter 20 and in Deuteronomy chapter 5. <clears throat> How's that going to help me know my sin? Well, you ask yourself questions according to the Ten Commandments. The Ninth Commandment says, Thou shalt not bear false witness. Have you ever told a lie? You'd have to be honest. There's too much at stake here. God says he knows the thoughts and the intents of the heart anyway. He knows the answer to that question. You need to be honest with yourself. Of course you told a lie, as everyone has. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay, all men are liars according to the Bible. So, yeah, you've told a lie, as I have. Have you ever stolen anything, irrespective of the value of it? Doesn't matter how big it is or how small it is, how valuable it is, it just does not matter. Have you ever taken anything that did not belong to you? Thou shalt not steal. Have you ever downloaded music off the Internet? Uh -huh. Have you ever taken anything from work, let's say a ballpoint pen? That's stealing. That makes you a thief. Have you ever used God's name in vain? You know, like a cuss word? Have you ever taken the holy name of God and dragged it through the mire and the muck? That's what you're doing when you use his name as a cuss, cuss word. God says, I will not hold that man guiltless that uses my name in vain. Have you ever committed murder? No, of course, we don't run around killing people or we'd be in jail. But the Bible also says if a man hate a person in their heart, 
It's the same as murder. Have you ever got mad at somebody and wanted to hit them? Ever sat there and cussed them out? That's the same as murder in your heart. Have you ever committed adultery? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Having a, an affair of some sort outside of marriage, that's adultery. No. Well, Jesus said, if you look upon a person and lust after them, you have committed adultery in your heart already. But I'm not married. No. How about fornication? Same as adultery. Fornication is sex before marriage. There again, you got to be honest. Remember, it's God the Father that sees all these things, the creator of the world. He knows the thoughts and intents. So if you take these Ten Commandments and you ask yourself questions pertaining to them, we didn't even go through them all. You'd find yourself guilty, wouldn't you? Breaking them. The Bible says, whosoever breaketh the law in one point is guilty of all. So if you go to judgment, you would stand before God and he would pronounce you, what, innocent or guilty? Guilty, of course. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, it says this, Know ye not that the unrighteous, there's that unrighteous, shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkard, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. You're standing before the God that created everything and he pronounced you guilty. Listen, this is the second death. Death after death at the judgment. Revelation 21 verse 8. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Jesus came to save sinners and to call them to repentance. How does he do that? And what is repentance? Repentance is, listen to this. In Proverbs 28, 13, it describes repentance to you. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. You try to justify your sin. You try to cover them up. When you go to God, the Father, at judgment, you die in your sin. You stand before him guilty. But if you'll forsake them, confess them and forsake them, that's what that repentance means. Confess it and forsake it. Here in Ezekiel 18.30, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgression, so iniquity will not be your ruin. Repentance in this life keeps you from going before God and being judged for your sin and cast into hell. How can we repent? You know what your sin is. The Ten Commandments showed you. You can admonish these sins. You can say, God, I hate these sins. These sins are the reason Jesus died on the cross. You can turn from your sin, just like with this coin, and turn to the cross of Jesus Christ. You can say, Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. I hate them. I don't want to do them anymore. But I put my trust in what you did on the cross to pay for my sins. And when you do that, immediately, immediately you become the sons of God. The Holy Spirit of God moves inside of you and marks you as his property. 
where are you going to be in 100 years from now? Why did Jesus die on the cross? While he was on that cross, God let mankind lift him up. And while Jesus was on the cross, God put all of mankind's sin on Jesus Christ and he judged that sin. Jesus suffered, bled, and died and paid the price for that sin so that you, a sinner, can come to repentance and turn to him and ask him to save you from the consequences of your sin. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Won't you consider your salvation today? Won't you turn to God? For today is the day of salvation.